I just want to show you those dead branches up on the edge of the tree there. Isn't that a lovely view of the court? See those dead branches? There's a kestrel that lives, that, stand, that perches on those branches and follows these cattle around. Because as we go through this really quite mature stuff on this frosty morning, they open it up and there's a huge population of small mammals that live on this forage. Uh, they're all vegetarian as well, just like the cattle. And so that really helps them. Now, every time I try and film this darn kestrel, it just flies off and I just cannot get a picture of it. There's loads of birds around at the moment, but it's really difficult to get any decent shots of them. Um, it is the fattest kestrel in Worcestershire, without doubt. The amount of hunting it does, uh, to be honest, I've never seen a bigger kestrel in my life. It's huge. Uh, and it's just following around these, these cattle. Uh, but I thought I'd just make this video because I'm going to put a few together and see, you know, how many times I can miss getting the kestrel. I thought eventually I'm going to get it uh, and we can see the infamous fattest kestrel in Worcestershire. So if you can, if you can just make out that bird hovering in the, uh, in the air, that is the fattest kestrel in Worcestershire. There he comes. He's always over where the cattle are as they uncover all the vole tracks and, and everything. This is the first time I've been able to get a, get him used to me enough that he stay, hangs around while I'm here. Um, there, is, there are two male kestrels that have just flown off into the distance now. Oh, they're coming back. Um, and they're fighting over the female. We're uh, end of December and um, yeah, they're just having a bit of a scrap over the female because she's obviously got such a good territory and she's in such good condition. Here she is again. Yeah, and I've just been told to tell the camera that, that my daughter Erin is here, so we'll just have a quick look. She's helping me move the fences with her ping wellies on. She's very excited. Hello. Here he goes. Okay, we've got, we've got some finches and some wagtails down here. And every time we move the cattle off, especially on a frosty day like this, which is difficult for the small, small birds, they come straight in and feed on the cow paddies. They start feeding amongst the cattle. Um, especially now it's just warmed up a bit. I'm going to try and get a bit closer and hopefully I'll be able to capture them taking off as we come up to them. There they are, they're just about to move. You see them go? They landed again, up again, off they go. Yeah, you can see them. Right, I didn't know whether that would get picked up, but here they come back again. Finches tend to the finches tend to stop. I think there's a linnets there. Uh, the finches tend to stop on the bit they've just come off, and then the wagtails will be in amongst the cattle. Sometimes on the cattle's back, picking through the fresh paddies and going for the seeds and whatever else. But you know, we've changed our livestock system so much that we just don't have cattle outside in the winter. We don't have long grass or tusky grass left over. This is what happens, this is after a graze. You can see the tussocks here. So there's seed left, there's cover. You know, so all of this has been lost from our landscape. And it's amazing, just to, a few weeks in to this winter, and the, the birds are just flocking to this herd of cattle. It's fantastic. Okay, you can see here, dead buzzard. I've just finished moving the cattle. You can see they're all down there. And this has actually just had another buzzard picking the flesh off the bones here. I don't know how this has died, but uh, there we go. Just open that wing out. Yeah. I, think, I don't know if this was the fattest buzzard in Worcestershire from feeding off everything that's in this pasture, but uh, there was a nest. Let's have a look. Out. You can see that there was a nest up in that tree. Um, actually, I think it was that tree. And um, 
and there's another one, and I don't know if it's related, but it was down here picking the uh, picking the meat off the bones of this. Um, but there's another buzzard around. There's two kestrels already today, um, and we've had there's loads of pied wagtails, linnets, meadow pipits. We've got. Um, they're all around and uh, it's just lovely to see in the winter such diversity and such such a lot of life around really. There we go. There we go. There's also a load of pied wagtails you can see if I can get up to those. And we can see the pied wagtails in amongst some of the cattle as well. Oh, here's the starlings coming back. Usually a slightly bigger flock than that. You go right in amongst the cattle again. And it just makes me wonder how important is that association with those birds? You know, having healthy soil, having dung that's not full of chemicals, that's you know, it's full of dung invertebrates for them to eat and you know, that association, you see it in the Serengeti, you see it in every environment, every wild environment. And it's something that you don't see when you're using chemical wormers and, and you damage your soil biology because of chemical fertilisers. So anyway, it's just a thought for the day and nice to see the wildlife arrives like this every morning. So if I get here early enough, I get to see, see it just as it arrives at work. Anyway, till next time.